Welcome to the Hunting Standard Podcast, featuring your hosts, Brady Ovid and Garrett Wood. Now, join us and dial in your next hunting adventure. One. Oh, I was off by half a second. But welcome back anyways. <laughs> the way it goes, we're always off by half a second here today. Buddy boy, it is bright outside, let me tell you we're, today. We are living the dream today. Sunshine is out. Winter's gone again. You see, these are not prescription. These are because it is bright outside. Woo. Let me tell you. Complete chain, Complete 180 from last week. Bruh. The snow is dissipating. You're probably not going to be able to get out of the driveway today because the there's going to be so much mud from all this melted snow. The sun is illuminating. <laughs> and here we are, enjoying, reaping the benefits. I'm here with Bob Ross today. Of all this vitamins. About to paint us a picture. Oh, dude. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The picture painted today is of the great Camas Prairie. <laughs> We're going to reap the benefits of this sunshine. We're yeah. going to talk about the benefits today. Man, you, spring training has started for the baseball team. Yeah, you're getting benefits out of it already. Yeah. My arm is about to fall off from throwing batting practice. Is that what you've been doing this week? Yeah. Throwing balls? Throwing ball. I don't have time for nothing because I'm throwing a ball. No hunting anymore. No, I, throwing still, get, I still get some hunting in. Okay. Springtime, you know what that means? Them songbirds showing back up. Yeah, nah, I'm just kidding. Let someone live. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't destroy songbirds. You're gonna wreck that daisy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Red Rider, you're gonna run her dry. Yeah, yeah. I've <sighs> worn out Red Riders in my day, though. Yeah, multiple. Good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and your kids should too. That's the ideal childhood, right? Yeah, burning through a couple barrels of Red Riders. Yeah, you know, everyone wants a Red Rider for Christmas. Why? You can't use it. It gets put. Here's the thing. Do not buy your kids Red Riders for Christmas. For Christmas. Easter, maybe? Easter present. It's the... Uh, if they've got the right birthday, maybe. Maybe we can yeah, catch no, the birthday. No, no, no. Easter, yeah. bro. Easter basket? No kid wants with a, a kite. A kite? I like kites. No, I don't like... What is a kite? You take it out there. Grandma gets you a kite. You don't like kites? No, dude. You t- Kites are the lamest present there is. Man. I love kites. No kid wakes up on Easter morning and is like, I'm excited for cargo shorts and a kite. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about a kite. For what? <laughs> fly a kite. And this is how we learned how to fly. No. <laughs> get out of here with that nonsense. Yeah. I have a feeling that this episode today is going to have a lot of arguing in it. So we're going we're gonna to battle. We're already, it's going to be a battle. There's already tension here. Are you team kite or team Red Rider BB gun for Easter? Maybe we get the bundle package. No. Dude, it, no. it's a recession right now. No. <laughs> the housing market's up here. The interest rates are up here. People can't afford both. we got to have some balance. You want to spend 40 bucks on a kite? Or do you want to spend 50 bucks on a Red Rider BB gun? All right. They might not even. They might be more than that nowadays. Yeah, I don't probably, know. Probably. Anyways, welcome Good. back to the hunting standard. We'll put one of those poles up, kite, <laughs> kite yeah. red rider. Yeah, I think uh, you're gonna take this one. The Graham. Yeah, yeah. I think you're probably gonna take this one, but I don't know, dude. All the ladies out there, they'd be like, but I, I had a lot of good fun with both. My kid would look so cute in cargo shorts and flying a kite. The cargo. That's not even in the pole, dude. But the kite and the gun. Yeah. yeah, cargo shirts are just a given. Yeah, that's out. What? Yeah. All right. Got to look, gotta look cute. What else are we doing in this sunshine? Oh, man. You got the baseball going. Baseball's going tomorrow. It's going to be about 50 degrees around here. Breaking the boat out. Oh, boy. I'm going right. to I'm gonna get him cleaned up, you know, get her looking right. There's still some ice out there. Throw some batteries up and about. I don't want to be hearing about the Titanic of the Clark Fork. No, nah, man. There's no ice on the Clark Fork right Done. now. Clear, yeah. huh? I, there probably is some ice, but, dude. If there's not, there might be a grapple bar or two. You might, yeah. Right. You might be able to sink the Titanic. You ain't sinking the old SS tracker. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Mm-hmm. But no, man, we're looking forward to this great weather coming. For sure. I just my attitude has done a three sixty or one eighty, I guess. Yeah. Since last week. Yeah. Good. Went from <laughs> crap to enjoyable as a human being again. Yeah. So good, good. So what are we talking about today, my man? Oh man. I got out yesterday. I I was supposed to sit here and do book work stuff yesterday. I didn't do it. It was too nice out yesterday too, so I got out, went for a little walk, looked for some horns. Um pretty slow area. I didn't really expect to find much, but but still got out, so that was good. But uh yeah, these hills are thawing out. Um the elk should be shedding. So oh, that's they exciting. Are, they they're they're definitely shedding. Yeah, or we killed all the bulls, one of the two. There's definitely there's definitely deer horns out there left to be found. So I'm getting stoked about getting out doing some shed hunting. Oh yeah. I know this is edgy for you. But Yeah, you know what? But I'm on board with having a big pile of horns behind us. We they, probably should have put some here on the table today. Shed hunting here's here's the news for you. Was it Utah? Outlawed shed hunting to a certain date. Yep. So Wyoming too. I was talking to a buddy last week about it because he goes down every year, hunts the preserve in Wyoming, Jackson Hole, Ooh. and he he's always asking me to go, and I've never went with him. It's always like I always plan on going, and then it's like that date has something come up, and I'm like, all right, busy that weekend. But I was like, yo, well, let's go this year. And we're talking about it. Wyoming changed their law too. Non-residents can't come in until like you can still go but you have to wait like a week until after all the residents go and great clean the area that's why wyoming a great state they think about their people first yeah i'm okay i like i like wyoming it's all right it's all right but it's kind of a bummer for because it used to be a grand old time you know like you go down there there's like they're losing a lot of money and yeah hundreds hundreds of people come in and yeah come for this opening of shit on the preserve there so yeah well but i don't know i like getting out just doing it on your own anyway you know one of the i like the quietness of it and really? that there's nothing quiet about those preserve openings. no preserve opening those are wild when did the ones in montana open may is it the 15th or the 20th i mean don't or the look first at, or don't look at me <laughs> my dude i don't do this we should have did our research before this i think it's the 15th of may on a Saturday? Probably. Let's, let's check it out. Let's get on the calendar here. Right. Pull up the calendar. I, dude, those uh, things we are have, What are we asco. doing with... We have like multiple cameras going on today. Yeah, we got things going everywhere. What's happening with that? I don't know. Just a Just, extra just angles, run. maybe. It's a Monday. May 15th is a Monday. What? So... Is that when it opens? I better I better okay. confirm, huh? Yeah. I bet you it opens I'll on a Saturday. I'll confirm here. I'll confirm here. You tell us about if you're signing up to go to this. I'm not signing up to do none of it, dude. I never have, never will. You've never been to one of these? No. I mean, I've driven past them. You when think, they're opening? Listen, you think Disneyland has long lines? Go to Sun River Game Refuge waiting for opening day of shed season and look at that fiasco. It's rowdy. Dude. How do I, how do you want to spend your Saturday waiting in line for eight hours to travel eight miles on foot just to get to the gate to where you can enter? <laughs> or do you want to go to Disneyland or ride some rides and have fun with your family? You know what I feel like going to these preserves? This is like I when they like open the gate. It's a safety risk. It's like Last of the Mohicans. No, it's like, <laughs> yes. it's like who's trying not to get double barreled by a bucking horse going through the gate. That could be too. Man, you got you got all these. It's a stampede. You have Mennonites running around the skirts trying to get sheds, dude. It's, it is. What is happening with that? It's rowdy, that, but, it, but I would recommend trying it at least. No, I don't, I've never I've never done it. I never will. My life is is fine. The last time I was over there, I I showed up the day of, 
and didn't get there until like an hour before opening. And I was probably back. Nine thousandth in I was, line? I bet I, was, I bet I was four or five miles down the road from the preserve. Just line of cars. There's, Why would there's, you do that? There's tents. They bring in porta potties because people are camping overnight. It's crazy. For, Craziness. For what? To get taking a home piece a, of ant. Taking listen, home a big set of horns. Listen, buddy. Oh, big set of horns. Yeah. Okay, listen to this real quick. Let me get in here. Okay. Getting in here. Get into it. So, personally, I have found yeah. some big sets of whitetail sheds. And I've hung them in a tree for the next guy. That's gross. I will tell you where they're at. <laughs> I don't even want to know. I don't even want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> tree. White tail shit. Time. Tree. White tail shit. Tree. The only day I ever packed a shit out is because I knew my dad would want to see them. Yeah. And I found six sheds in about three seconds, it seemed like. I came up over this rise, and they were just laying everywhere. Yeah. Matching sets. Did that excite you? No, not no. one bit. Dude. I'm like, <laughs> I look at it. I'm like, hmm. I guess they was here. <laughs> they they ain't now. I guess they was here. You want more. the animal? The whole. <laughs> animal. <laughs> yeah. You I know hear what? that. I used to like. I used to be the same. I mean, it, I never left any in the woods. If I found them when we were out riding horses or something, then I would get them, pick them up. You know, or I was out hiking, I pick them up. I never, I never once remember like a time I was younger, like specifically, like I'm going to go out and look for shed horns until it was like early archery season on a piece of public that a thousand people hunt. And I was coming up like a clear open topped ridge. And here's this bullshit. This would have been like a 360 bull. 360 bull. Yes. Hmm. Good, good bull. Good bull for our part of the country over there and that part of the world they probably throw it out. Yeah. But uh I was stoked. I was like, holy cow. And I just kinda I just kinda got addicted after that. It gave me a little rush that I just had to now I want to go look for them every year. I don't know. Man. Maybe maybe it's because my my parents ruined Easter for me as a child, and and uh, made me look for these stupid eggs and whatnot. Any like go search, like go look for the prize thing is just wasted on me. We tried. <laughs> did you, did geo- you not? Did you not find any eggs when you were a child? No, dude. Maybe dude, you're damaged. No, no. This is what would happen. They put all these eggs out there, and I'm like thinking. Where would they put the prize egg? I don't oh, care. because that's what that egg with the money in it or Bro, something. That yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, 20 bucks. Ooh. And I'm like, why would I pick up all these other ones when they ain't the prize egg? <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess what? I would go. They'd have like two or three prize eggs, right? Yeah. So hopefully multiple. No, I'd find all three of them. And then they'd be like, no, you have to share. <laughs> dude, it's stupid, dude. That's that's a little Dumb. haywire. Yeah. I I come rolling back into the living room with three eggs and they're all golden. Twenty bucks in them. And everyone else is like, man, these rotten color dyed Easter <laughs> eggs. <laughs> I don't think that teaches a good lesson. It teaches a great lesson. What? Weed through the crap and get to the gold, my dude. I mean, your your approach is good. Making you share your golden eggs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What kind of a You put in the work Nazi for the golden BS. eggs. Maybe you should earn the golden eggs. Exactly. Huh? If you choose to share, that's cool. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, anyone else listening to this? You ruined me. <laughs> ruined on the yeah. golden eggs. Yeah. Yeah. So, you want, here's the thing. Okay, people. Back to shed hunting. Getting off the family issue. The emotional damage. <laughs> okay, we're getting back to the shed hunting. The best sheds I've ever found. A matching set of spikes. What? I picked them bastards up. On the state piece. Why was that the best set? Because who finds... Because where they were? First of all, who finds matching 
four inch spikes. Who? Name one. Have you ever found matching four inch spikes? And I know they were matching because they were laying right there next to each other where he brushed them off on this little pine tree. It seems like those little guys usually shed right there. Quite, a, quite a ways apart. Different. No, these two were laying right there. Yeah, I found way more big horns together than I have little horns for sure. And I was turkey hunting when this happened. Get a turkey? No. No turkey? No. Spike shed horns. Spike shed horns. Well, that's good too. No, I mean, it's my Gold, best. Golden goose. The best find. I kept them. Good. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, when, you, when, you're, when you're listening to this video, I want you to comment a picture of your greatest find. Matching set of spike. There we go. Antlers. For every point that your antler has on it is a deduction. Deduction. <laughs> Yeah, the name of the game here at the hunting matching standard. S- matching, matching set, spike shed. yeah, matching set of spike sheds. That's a hundred points. Mm. You have a big five by five. That's minus ten. That's only a ninety pointer. <laughs> that's quite the logic here yeah. today. Yep. Mm. Or maybe we 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 make it even crazier and we do matching set. It's ten points of spike sheds. Matching set of five by five. That's zero. <laughs> that is no good. You're out of the game. Out of the game. Huh. Anyways, back to your shed hunting. Back to that. Yeah. Got out yesterday. Did a little looking around. Didn't find a lot. It's, I mean, the the whitetails this year, in our part, of the, I mean, in the state, like mm-hmm. I'm running all over the state all the time watching all these different spots. They shed early this year. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like. Like there, I don't recall seeing many whitetails with horns after New Year's this mm. year. I, usually, it seems like like the first week of January they start like in there. Um, I don't you, really pay attention, to but that. you see like the first couple weeks of January, you see quite a few whitetails with horns still, and they kind of drop off after there. But most of them were gone by the first of the year this year. It seemed like, and usually, the elk are starting like. I don't know. I'd say like 10th to the 15th of March around here is pretty. Really? Yeah. But uh, we're pushing that now, and I have yet to see a bull elk that's dropped. Really? And I have some buddies that are watching elk, different groups, and they have yet to see any bull that's dropped. You mean, of- you mean you have friends who sit on the edge of a mountain? On the daily. <laughs> and watch elk. Yeah. For them to drop their yep. antlers. Yep. That is what's wrong with America today. <laughs> that's deep in the shit, huh? Do you use that's shit? How, that's how you let's, get a pile of horns. You got to get out there. Let's start this, okay? Do you use shed hunting as a way to scout animals? Yes. Really? Tell in, me more. In certain places. Okay. Lay it out for me. I think for the most part, the elk are in a little different places in the fall. Same same general area, maybe, like maybe further down in the valley or further up, depending what part of the fall you're hunting. Hmm. Like during the rut, they're going to be probably down lower, it seems like, than where they're at right now, dropping horns. But the whitetails, there's a lot of spots that I've found where whitetails drop horns that that buck will be in the same area. I think especially with like the bigger bucks. Really? Yes. Those bigger bucks, it seems like, have their domain and they kind of stick to it. Unless there's something that changes their pattern there. Mm. Over over in the east, where we were the last few years of our lives, there's places over there where I know people that kill whitetail bucks consistently every year that they'll pick up the horns in the spring and kill a buck there that fall within... 100 yards of where the sheds were well i mean anytime you have a private ranch this isn't just private these are public pieces anytime you have a private ranch where there's no pressure i was thinking more about i mean would you leave your living room if you didn't have to work no yeah Yeah, i would (laughs) yeah i would i would sit in my living room we get the sunshine outside i'm not sitting in this living room 
man. But, but, uh, that's, that's a factor in it for the deer though. Okay. In areas where they're not pressured like that. Hmm. And it's not just on private. There's public pieces that people aren't hunting very much. Yeah. They're hard to access. We've kind of, we'll have to do an episode on that about how to access things, how to access some of those spots. But some of those places that are hard to get into that a lot of people aren't hunting is where these guys are killing bucks consistently. Yeah. Where their sheds are being found close by. So I'd say, yeah, hmm. it's an option. Scouting, looking for sheds, and then finding where they're at there. Maybe I just never had an eye for it. I don't know. For, for, the, for the color. I know people who like walking on the hillside. And they're looking across, and they're like, oh, that's a shit. I'm like, what are you looking for, dude? We're hunting. Yeah. Like, you should be looking for yellow and brown. It's certainly one of those things not you get an eye for. Not an antler. It's certainly something you get an eye for. Like, I didn't I didn't hardly find any for a long time. And then once I started finding some, then I had, like, years I'd go out and find quite a few. I mean, not compared to a lot of people, but for what I'd done previously. Think of how many antlers would be out there if you if it was illegal. <laughs> think of, it think, is in some places. Think There's about places that. you're not. Think of how majestic the woods would be if you could just go and be like, "Man, we're amongst them," and just like walk and pass all these antlers. You wouldn't, because they lay there for a year, and these little chatter squirrels eat, just chow them down. So they man, don't they don't I mean, last long. Maybe what I'm saying is then. Is we're destroying habitat for chatter squirrels. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a fight here on the standard today. <laughs> uh, Maybe what I'm saying, you destroyed this chatter squirrel population already with your red rider. <laughs> you take that red rider out and you get the chatter squirrels done. <laughs> done in. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you have it. There's a. Kill the chatter squirrel. There's some there's some tactics for this though. Is there? Yeah. I mean you get it's kinda of one of those things again, like I didn't find any for quite a while and then you get used to looking for them and figure out where different spots to look where you're just because you go out and stomp around in the woods for days and not find anything. You know? Yeah, I guess. But especially on years like this where we have like heavy snow, that seems to like really help. Like, Why do you think that is? Because there's a, a lot of country that these animals can't get food in from the heavy snow. Or it's hard to get food in. So there's certain areas that they hang out in all winter or the time of year when they're shedding. Because it's easier to get down to the food there. Yeah. Fair enough there. That, that would make sense if you were looking for that kind of thing. Yeah. So like going out looking for elkhorns this, within the next couple of weeks. Like we have a ton of snow still. I mean, there's a lot of people that are watching elk, too, and they know. They're already there. They know where the elk are at, and they're watching them, waiting for them to drop. But if you're not, if you're just, you have the weekend to go, you're getting out, it's like, where should we go look? Where should we go look for horns, you know? Well, here's here's my thing with that right now. Yeah. The last couple of days, I've seen about 200 head of elk. Right here. <laughs> Right, right out the door here. Yeah. And then um, another hundred on the way here. And hate to break it to you, there ain't no bulls in this herd. There's, I've seen four spikes in this group. Here. Yeah. So no, not a single branch. You want to get a, You want to get a ten point. You want to get a ten pointer on the uh, old hunting standard score. Go find yourself a matching set of spike elk sheds. I might be at ten points. Me. Gryffindor. There we go. The bulls are up higher, is the thing. Yeah. After they get done rutting in the fall, they kind of separate out into their bachelor groups. And most of the time, they go up higher or into these secluded areas where they're not going to get pressure from other stuff. And that's where they spend the winter, is in those areas. Yeah. But they're kind of confined to being up high like that. Like we said, there's so much snow. They get confined to like certain spots. And that's where I'm looking usually. It's like, so you go out and you're looking, trying to find horns. The spot to be is like south-facing slopes. Yeah. 
And I think like early spring right now is the perfect time to look at that because there's still snow on the rest of it. But you can see these south facing slopes where it's completely melted off. And it might just be like a little patch. And there it like is. Like one ridge that's clear this time of year and the rest of it's covered in snow still. Laying out for the taking. So that's my strategy. Like if I'm going out, just going to go for the weekend and look for horns, you find one of those spots and don't focus on any of the rest of the mountain. You go and grid that ridge that's melted off. Do you use a dog for this? I have the last the last two years. See, Getting I could that. I could this is where we might have some commonality here. You might I could get, get into that because then I could just let the dog have it as a chew toy later on. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And be like, Good work, dog. You could. You did good. Here's your reward. Yeah. I'm not gonna take your golden eggs away from you. Yeah. We're not gonna share. I'm not gonna make you do all the work. <laughs> you keep it. You keep your golden egg. <laughs> My <laughs> Mine is being trained heavily to bring it to me and get a treat and drop it at my feet and give it back to me. I was told from one of the, I was told that uh, the offspring of my dogs. Are they doing good? I was told they're shed hunting fools. That's cool. And I'm like, no, I feel sorry for selling one to you. (laughs) They're meant to hunt birds. You don't support it. They can do both. I feel like you ruin them. No. <laughs> I feel like they love every bit of being oh, out. Oh, I'm sure they so. do love it. They love swimming too, but Yeah. No. That's been that's been exciting. <laughs> like last year my dog was still a pup still, right? She was like mm-hmm. how old when I was taking her out looking for horns? Mm, six months maybe or something. Mm-hmm. Or less. But she was yeah. excited about it and doing pretty good. And then this spring I've been working with her and she's doing good. Like go hide stuff and she finds it good so i haven't taken her to any of these big like preserve kind of deals yet do people take dogs to these things mm-hmm. Oof. not a lot but you see a few huh and they usually do pretty good just because they sneak in there three months before and stash them all <laughs> in piles that could be there's a lot of and then they oh man Re- regardless of what anybody says that'll never be a That'll never be a fair game for... No. Because why, why would it be? I mean, you go... Drones, dude. Just drone around. Yeah. And be like, hey, there's something over there. Hey, I'm not I'm not on one side of the fence or the other. You know? Yeah. And obviously, like, we can't just hide it and pretend like that doesn't happen. Yeah. So you might as well talk about it. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean... You know what they say? They say... If a guy reads the rule book, he's looking to cheat. <laughs> if you're reading all the rules about what you can and can't do, you're going to be riding the line on legal, the legality of the whole thing. Probably. So. You kn- that you mind. know that you know that that happens a lot. Like I I wouldn't know how many people are doing that, but it's got to be quite a bit. Yeah. Because you every one of these openers you go to, there's. You can go out and like you might find a horn or two, mm-hmm. but there's also there's also guys that just whether they're on horses or on foot or whatever, just sprint to their. I mean, they have a direction in mind and they're headed there. Yeah. And what's the difference? What's the difference within the first half an hour? They have a full pack of horns. And it's what's, like, what is holy the cow man matched up? What's the difference between you cruising in on your horse and uh, me? cruising my drone over there and be like, oh, there's one. Because if I didn't have the drone, you would have a clear advantage with your horse. Disadvantage for me. And if we're talking about the equitability of this whole game. I don't know. You can move faster on the horses, cover more ground. Right. Can I ride my e-bike in there? No. No. This stuff gets crazy. Dude, horse people. I don't know what the... I don't know, know what the I know right you're answer a horse, is. You're that. a horse person. I understand this, but I've never taken my horse to one of these, though. The horse people get all bent out of shape about the e-bike people <laughs> and 
the reason why is because you don't have to spend all year hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of dollars feeding your damn e-bike. No. <laughs> that is why. You don't have to take a trailer. They're just pissed, dude. Huh. That you can just like cruise in there without a motor and yeah. be in there. Yeah. Pedal assist. I'm not on either side. I'm like, I'm like, I mean, use your resources. However you want to do it, go do it. Yeah. Cause I don't don't whine about what other people are doing and just play your own game. I'm feeling confrontational today. Get after. I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about land impact? Land impact are those big old horse trails, cattle trails that are going through the woods. That will stay there for a lot longer than me riding an e-bike down a road. <laughs> But it is what it is. You're speaking to the wrong guy. I know. I'm I'm for either of them. Yeah. I'll ride my horse, ride my e-bike. I'd rather be locked up to everyone in by a year old. And there's some places that different. Walk in with your Nikes. Yeah. There's some places different deals work there too. Like this fall I went into a spot that there wasn't really a good trail in there and went in quite a ways. I wouldn't have wanted to be on. I mean, you couldn't have ridden a bike in there. Yeah. But the horse you could take. So that was cool. Hmm. But there's also like, like the logging roads and that stuff where the gates just closed. Yeah. Ride your bike down the road. Yeah. Ride your motor. Ride your floor. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean. The more, I guess the more the access is restricted, the better it makes it for the opportunity once you get in there is the thing. Yeah, for sure. But. Like the Bob Marshall. Yeah. You look at the Bob. There's horses everywhere in there. Camps, big old camps. And mm-hmm. you wonder why the hunting sucks in there now. Predators. A lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. More and more pressure all the time. Yeah. There's been like a huge drive on that just in general in the last few years of people that are trying to do these big backcountry hunts. Like, yeah. go way back in and get something. Well, it's like majestic, you know? It's like, like there's a romantic part of it yeah the people are like man we go way back into the woods yeah for days on end with nothing but my freeze-dried food that i bought (laughs) it didn't create myself yeah and it's fun like i understand it but at the same time like i'm looking at like all the opportunities right i'm looking at like Like, i want to get a bull or i want to get a nice buck yeah where's the best opportunity to do it for sure if it's going way back in, then for sure that's what I'm after. If it's if I, it's I, climbing up some nasty spot that no one else is climbing into, but it's a short distance in there, I'm for that. I just am like, why? If I'm letting you have your fun, and that's accepted, your fun is accepted fun, and then the years progress and technology gets better and better, am I allowed to take a pedal bike into these places? Yep. Oh, yeah. So technology, you know, we're going to change. You can't wear, you can't, your horses can't have shoes on anymore because they might throw a shoe. That's not natural. You know what I mean? Yeah. Progression. Here's another thing. You have to wear a snaffle. Actually, you have to go, you can't have a saddle all of a sudden. (laughs) (laughs) See what I mean? It's like how fat, how far back do you want to go before it gets ridiculous? Yeah. It's like, just let it happen. As long as you're respectable, you're not littering, you're being a good Samaritan, you're I'm waving on the trail. That's what that's what pisses me off more than anything. Don't just put your don't stick your nose up at me. No, I'm not about that. Yeah. So wave, enjoy it, love each other, be a human. <laughs> it's the peace and love podcast now. That's yeah. what we're getting after today. Peace and love. Going down a road, down a path. How is this going to change things with these companies that are trying to develop these like man-made drones now? Have you seen any of those? What do you mean? I mean, they already have them, but it's like they're trying to develop it so that the public can buy these things. And they're a man? They're, they're like your drone. They're a human? They're like your, no, they're like oh. your remote control drone that a person can get in and run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How is that going to change the hunting game? It's gonna piss off a lot of ranchers. I mean, it's not happening. It's not happening this year, but five, ten years from now, 
That's gonna. Well, they already have it, dude. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, no, no. They already have a version. Yeah. So like, you don't have to have a pilot's license. But it's not readily acceptable. For this, you'd probably have to have a pilot's license. Because for drones, you have to have some sort of aviation license. Yeah. But they are. They have a deal. It's like a guy with a fan backpack <laughs> strapped onto his backpack. Yeah. And then he like parasails. In. Can you imagine taking that in somewhere? Dude, I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, man. And you don't have to. You have to abide by a few certain rules or whatever. But you don't have to have this big aviation license. Yeah. High risk, high reward, maybe, huh? Yeah. I don't know how you'd get things out. You might pile into a you'd pine tree and die. 20, or... 20 pounds at a time on the pack out, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's coming, though. That kind of stuff. I love it. Crazy. Crash landing somewhere. Ooh. Yeah. A for effort. That's what, like, kind of all this, like the shed hunting thing, getting back to that. Yeah, this is taking a turn. But. We're we're going all over today. It's cool. It's all good. But getting back to the shed thing, for me, that's like just about getting out and like being in the in the woods, like peaceful, quiet, like getting away from all the hustle, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like mixed feelings on all that stuff, all that technology. For me, this is this is what this is my deal. Shed hunting. This is why I don't like shed hunting. I mean, it's whatever. If you're picking them up to use as decor or something in your house, yeah, cool, whatever. It's like picking up a rock in my <laughs> boat. You know, like, oh, I like that rock. I'll take that home. It's a heart. Mom will love it. Okay? I'm yeah. not saying don't pick up the heart rock. Pick up the heart rock. Meaningful. But it's just another way for value to be added, a price tag to be added to an animal. To a public animal. Because mm-hmm. people aren't... People selling this stuff. Oh, yeah. For, I sold a bunch this year. Yeah. Turn them into a light. And, yeah. And if it's... I mean... There's a business for it and whatever. Cool. Awesome's possum. But I just... For myself... I, I would rather take a picture of that animal with those antlers on his head. And be like... This was a nice bull. <laughs> now it's in my... It's mine. Now he's going home with me. Now he's stuffed right there. On my wall. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Like, look at this trail cam picture at 12 (laughs) p.m. Here he is with those antlers on his head. Yeah. Obviously, when it comes to that, that's my first choice. Yeah. I'd 100% rather have the big buck or the big bull on my wall than just going out and finding the set of sheds. Because but, I, I, so I feel like shed hunters, they're they're not they don't like not all of them of course, but they don't like actually hunting because they're like man then I'd have to process this. I thing. think there's different breeds I, of them. Yeah, it's the, kind of like the modern day shed with hunter. the duck hunters or with the bird hunters in general, I guess. Yeah, like there's different kind of bird hunters. Yeah, there's different kind of shed hunters. Yeah, like I 100 percent know guys like you're talking about that like shed hunting is their that's their outdoor adventure. They could care less yeah. if they ever shoot anything and put anything in the freezer. And then they stand. They just want to go find horns. Then they just stand there and they're like on Instagram. They're like, "Look at these sheds I found." And then you scroll through their page and like, that's their deal. That's all they have that's going their on. Deal. Yeah, their their sheds. They don't ever hunt anything. They don't. Yeah. And to each their own, obviously. But for me, it's just another like I'm on a different end of it where it's it's another reason to get out. Like early spring, nice days. No seasons are open to hunt yet. It's something to get out and go do, and it's cool. And walking out of somewhere with a backpack full of elk horns is a pretty cool feeling. Yeah, I can understand that. This pissed me off. This was a this this might be the the root of all my anger towards shed hunting. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rat the guy out because you know he's he's up there in the uh, hunting world or whatever. But he drew a tag. Let's say. Um, anyways, this guy drew a tag. And there was this really big bull, huge, four hundred class bull. Sure. And he hunted it for weeks. Couldn't find it anymore. So he shot this, like three, sixty bull or whatever. Okay. 
Then he went and found this big bull sheds the following spring. Yeah. And he mounted them sheds on the on his bull mount. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. That's greasy. Dude, I saw it and I was it just I don't see <laughs> it, 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 it a little fire me. inside yeah, it, from it angered me. Yeah. That's greasy. <laughs> what? Kinda there's nothing low life. There's nothing cool about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and so a shed hunter to me is that person. Yeah. That's fair. I'm like, oh, oh, because you weren't happy with what you, your ability, yeah, and what you were able to overcome. Now you have this, this mount on your wall of something <laughs> that you could not accomplish. I've never, I've never had that feeling with it. It's always been like the opposite for me. It's like going out, like you go out into an area that you've looked at, and you know there should be horns there, but you never know for sure. It's like there's animals in here. You've seen them in there good south facing slope up in the mountains somewhere and you you get in there and you find a pack full of horns and go home with it and you know that you were the first one in there to do it and no one else has been there that's an accomplishment to me that feels yeah. pretty good you're like i came in clean this area out and if you're ever hunting this is to everyone if you're hunting in northwest montana or eastern montana predominantly in northwest montana and you find a 140 class whitetail shed or bigger, I mean, just whenever, hanging in a tree, I put it there. <laughs> Multiple. Oh, my. So, I mean, you didn't find it first. Thank you, boy. It's kind of like... At the hunting standard. It's kind of like shooting an animal with an ear tag or something. Or a collar. Mm. it's like did you actually like there's some, there's a romantic part about like being the first person to ever capture that animal yeah it's just that it's just a completely different satisfaction than well, actually going in and be killing like, him because you know to if me. you if you went out and shot an elk yeah and it had a collar on it Someone, someone, someone already touched they it. They already got this one. <laughs> they touched this one already. <laughs> I don't want no one touching my animal. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Shed hunting's the same for me. That makes sense. If I if I found out that they were trying to do some poaching operation sting on this guy or whatever, and I picked up a shed that had a microchip in it, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, take your stupid shed. The amount of that that's going on right now is crazy. I know. The amount of sheds that's being marked. Yeah, like that's in different in, places. Dude, that's entrapment too. A hundred percent. Because here's the thing. Yeah. You could be a scumbag, if that's what you want to call it, and go in and before the legal days and stack things up and then FWP will go in there and mark a antler. And then you could be some normal guy who happened to be there before, stumble upon this pile of sheds. Be like, what are you supposed to do? Mm, that looks suspicious. I'm not touching that pile. No, you're going to be like, wow, someone did some dirty work for me. Yeah. And then guess what? You're going down because they put a microchip in. Yeah. That's. Here's the thing about it. How do you alibi that? <sighs> I don't know. And here's the thing about it. It's like, what's different between you going and picking up a horn and them going and picking up a horn? Exactly. Because what a lot are of, you doing in there before the time? A lot of these deals. It's not like they're just going in like, oh, there it is on the ground. Let's mark it, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few places, like I know of, where they've been different operations, where they'll pur purposely go out and put something or move it, like put it next to the road. Yeah. Like open sight. Everyone driving by will see this. Somebody's going to take it. Yeah. And it's marked. Yeah. Just to trap you. Yeah. And yes, somebody's going to take it. Exactly. Like, why would you leave that lay there? If you were up in the middle of nowhere and you stumbled upon a hundred dollar bill, you're like, wow, my lucky day. Are you like... Just to come to find out <laughs> that someone stuck it there to trap you to see if you were going to take it or not. It's like, it's a hundred dollar bill. We're 20 miles away from anything. Yeah. Who's going to come back and claim it? Oh, but now I get in trouble for... You know what I mean? It's just... It's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> It's, I don't know. 
it's sticky because there's most of this goes on in the like preserve areas and they love doing it to people yeah yeah most of it happens in these preserves where it's like there's a influx of animals anyway there's a pile of sheds in there yeah and it's like a target rich opportunity for someone to go find horns Mm -hmm. people are automatically drawn to it but at the same time the whole thing is like like it's it's not really good for anything to have these places like it's kind of like having the fake deer dude yeah like the thing with the fake deer oh we're trying to catch a group of poachers Okay, you're trying to catch a group of poachers that have been doing this every day for whatever. But then all of a sudden, and especially on public land, if it's a fake deer on public land, that's greasy. That's greasy, that's dude. Because really maybe, greasy. Because maybe old Betty Lou and her grandson are rolling down the road. Maybe they just need. And to this eat. is their food, man. Yeah, like they're, they're not they're, gonna make winter without they it. They don't care if it's a f- spike, a fork and horn. They don't care. Oh, grandson gets out, walks to the side of the road and shoots it. Technically, that's illegal. Yeah. And, like, he wasn't trying. I get it. If it's it, at nighttime, sure. If, you know, yeah. on private land, sure. Yeah. That's. But in the broad daylight, on public land, in a place where people are hurting for money and food. Yeah. That's greasy. Unfortunately, I think like all this comes back to the same thing. It's just that yeah. there's so much money in the hunting industry now. Yeah. And like shed hunting is a perfect example. Like what we're talking about like, here. I'll take some of that. Yeah. Perfect example of yeah. how money's just becoming a huge part of it. And that's what, I mean, like that preserve in Wyoming there, the Boy Scouts get to go in there and clean the actual preserve. And then they auction that every year. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's great chunk of money for them. Yeah. I think I don't want to botch the numbers on it, but I think they're probably thirty, forty thousand a year they get off, maybe more. Yeah, no, for that's their a, program. That's great. It should be used for stuff like that. Yeah, and like that kind of thing's okay. Yeah, but it's just the the fact that there's money around all of it, and there's money around keeping people away from it. I mean, there's money around all of it until you have a chunk of land. I bet that it, no one really wants because it doesn't have a value right, right then and there. Yeah. And then no one wants it in the government. They're like, no, we don't even want to touch that. It's like, what? (laughs) Not anymore. (laughs) You don't want to touch it? Okay. Unfortunately, I bet. Some big Florida guy is going to touch it. Yeah. Lock it up. Turn it into something better. Yeah. I bet, like, these preserves within a number of years are going to be, that'll be monetized. Like, you'll have to pay. Swipe your card. You'll have to pay to go, or you'll have to apply to go, like, like the Smith River and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Yep. And I bet that's where that's going to. Maybe, dude. Or it'll be like, take a number. Okay, now we're calling numbers 1 through 20. Yeah, go. Go. Okay, yeah. All right, now we're calling 21 through 40. Go. Yeah. Which, <laughs> whatever. Once again, when you, I guess it has to be kind of monitored in some way when you get such an influx of yeah. animals and opportunity there. Like, you can't. I don't know what you do. Like, would it be okay if there was just a free-for-all on it? or? Man, I feel like I think they're if there's... managing things that don't matter. Like, let's put less effort into who gets a piece of bone that came off a deer's head or elk's head. Yeah. On a, like, let's, who really, okay, let, yeah. the, let the people make their money, okay? Well, you put all your effort into our special news alert from three or four episodes ago. <laughs> How about you fix the mule deer numbers in Region 7? How about you help fix the private land elk deal that's going on throughout the state and letting the yeah. you know big shots that live not even in Montana like fix, fix all this stuff instead of, nope, you know what? <laughs> He's trying to pile a piece of bone in an area and uh, <laughs> we're going to find him for that. It's like, God, today on the today, hunting standard like we call for reform in ftwp yeah my god uh, you know what vote vote for uh one of us for governor or something and we'll fix it brady's running for governor 2030 yeah 2030 2030 putting in your putting your name in the pot yeah now. yeah all right put my name in the pot because i just can't watch our state dwindle away like it is yeah 
it's the money they just see the money with it and where can we i mean it's like running a business you know where can we monetize more which yeah. is unfortunate <sighs> and they don't do much for the people anymore because the idea is that all these resources are like common for the common people like yeah share them amongst the people for they come from the land people that are living on the land can use them kind of thing I mean, you look at why I I mean, go back into to Wyoming, Wyoming's FWP or whatever fish and game. Yeah. Reformed everything a year or two ago to benefit local people. Yeah. They made they dropped the number of out of state tags. They did all these things because local people were not getting opportunity or the same opportunity as yeah. they had prior. And now, Montana's at a similar situation where it's like the local people, Monday through Friday, have to work. So they get Saturday and Sunday to go out and hunt. Meanwhile, there's 17,000 yahoos running around Monday through Friday who took time off. They're probably Monday to Friday guys too. Took their weekend off. That's all them. Yeah. Perfect, and our and we allot seventeen thousand. But then FWP's like, oh, we can make more money over here if we let these guys do it and these guys do it. No, you get seventeen thousand, divide and conquer. I said you don't get more, you get that. Yeah, but I don't know. There's the problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoever There's has the issues. answers, whoever has the answers, bring them forward. I have the answers. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep them in the bag for the governor run. Yep, yeah, give them yeah, okay. in the pocket. There you go. Put them away. Good, good. Yep. All kinds of troubles there. Yeah, man. I mean, it's crazy. It's just things like things like these WMA openings, though, make you see it more. Yeah. Where there's like thousands of people flocking in here. That's just a rush on this. A rush on going to hunt antlers. That's crazy. Yeah. Well. I just don't get it. There's literally, where I went to college, there's this huge ranch, right? Yeah. And they allow people to, to hunt and do all that um, through a sign-in BMA mm. uh, throughout the hunting season. But they write so many dang trespassing tickets during shed season. Yeah. It's the dude's land. Get off. Mm. You were not allowed on there. Like, why are you... People are like, oh, we thought yeah, we could go into this. I just, I just, it's an antler, bro. It's an antler. Mm. Go to the door, knock on the door, be like, hey, can I go look for an antler in this area? No. Piss off, then. Go find a new area. It's big It's big money now, though. Yeah. Well, the, the ones that I got for... I didn't have enough of my own, bought some for those lights I did last year. Yeah. And... I paid nineteen dollars a pound for them, I think. What? Yes. And you think like a good sized elk horn, like what's that weigh? A couple pounds, a couple five, six pounds. Or more. More. Ten, like yeah. a heavy bull horn, ten, twelve, fifteen, but yeah. So why are people not after the moose paddle? So if you have packfuls, <laughs> it adds up quick. Why is everyone after the elk and not the moose? I'd say numbers. You can't go out and it'd be pretty tough to go into an area and find. I guarantee a big you, I could, quantity, dude. I could sorts. go into an area and find five moose sheds in two days, and then and then that'd be it. Like you're, <laughs> and then I go to my other area and find five more the next two days. <laughs> Let's see it. Bring them on this. Bring them on the show next week. I'll hang them at a tree for the rest of you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt you can find some, but it's just like. A lot of these places where there's bulls hanging out and stuff, you can go into a spot. You might pick a dozen horns off of one hillside or something, you know? I mean, yeah. That's probably true. That's pretty tough to do with moose. I've seen more moose bulls this year than elk bulls. The, in our yeah, neck it of the seems woods. like there has been a lot of moose around. So that's I mean, good. That's the cool. One day, one day we saw five or six bulls, bull moose. In in one area, then the next day we saw like three or four different ones. Oh. And got them all on the camera. Took pictures of them with their antlers still on. There you go. You've been on the moose grind this year. Maybe yeah. this is your year to get a tag. 
Yeah, well, even I, I, don't, I really it. don't care if I get a tag or not. Even. I'd rather just shoot him with a camera. Bad <laughs> jokes. Good <laughs> jokes. Get off the hunting standard. <laughs> <laughs> jokes. You're no, you're no longer a host here. <laughs> no, man. I The moose thing, that bugs me a little bit, that it's not a once-in-a-lifetime deal here in Montana. Just because there's people who have drawn four or five tags throughout their life, and then there's people who haven't drawn or yep. when they do draw like so the the fella i helped this year a little bit you know we just we knew where these moose were we kind of sure, gave them keeping a little, an eye out for them yeah keeping an eye out for them yeah anyways we we found this group of five moose and they were at a very huntable spot for this guy um he had late stage cancer he's he actually he passed away um a month or two after this is his last hunt his last hunt he ever had in his life was his brother was out here, his son was out here, and we were helping him. And uh, he ended up getting a really nice moose out of this group. That's cool. But um, I mean, it was a very special moment for for them. But yeah, it's like he had a month to reminisce on it. That's it. Mm. Instead of like twenty years. I mean, and no one knows how long they're gonna live or whatever. But yeah. It's like 20 years. Some people reminisce on, oh, yeah, I had two or three different moose hunts, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, really? Well, <laughs> this guy, you know, he had a month to do it. So, yeah. It's unfortunate, but. Mm. Yeah. That's the, that's the challenges, I guess, of the the system that we have to draw tags here. Yeah. So it is what it is. <laughs> what a reform. Keep those coming. answers in yeah, your pocket. Keep the, I'm keeping the answers. Get the, get the reform coming. Get the reform coming for sure. Because I just think that they prioritize things that are, it's like, why? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. And then it's like, well, you get a thousand dollar fine if you go grab a clump of antlers. <laughs> yeah. But, on yeah. this Friday of us ragging on FWP, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let us know your own thoughts. Uh, and I mean, and it's not it's not everyone at FWP because no, I one. have a lot it's of good. friends that work there, and they do their best, and they have similar views to me. Or you know, and it's just like, well, it's what the it's the governor or it's the commission of just, FWP just pushing it on to something. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I think it's everybody. Everybody involved has to. Yeah. yeah. We're not saying be disrespectful towards FWP or anything, but no. like ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. And just look for opportunities where things could be better. Yeah. Like how could you change it and make it a better yeah. better system there? Email your commissioners, give them a reason to respond. Sure. So that's good. Yeah. Get out and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, that's what I'm about go to go. Go find do. go find some antlers, regardless of what Brady says. I'm about to go throw some BP here today. Yep. Um Maybe teach a kid how to hit or two, you know? There you go. Um, what else? Oh, the buyer bust for today. Hmm. Hmm. I haven't I haven't thought through this. You got yeah. a good buy a good something you need for shed hunting? I think like a shed dog, dude. Maybe a buyer good Buyer bust pack. a good shed dog. Good dog, yeah. Yeah. That could help. Like can any dog be a shed dog, do you think? I think if you have a dog that's smart enough to teach it things, it can be a shit dog. It's just that you just teach them how to do it. So if know? I had this little mixed corgi dog and it was a really smart wizard of a dog, he, he might be able to get it, huh? Well, to start with, <laughs> I've never found a corgi mixed with any brains in its head. Hey, I I'm going to get some hate for that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's okay. My roommate, Dylan, your dog was the best dog there was. Second. Corgi I've never found up. a corgi mix that could pack a 20-pound elk shed. Well, those are uh, those are zero points on the scale. Mm, we're looking, yeah. 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 Corgi could probably pack a spike back home for exactly. you. Exactly. Ten points. Well, all right. <laughs> but, no, yeah. I think you probably want a bigger dog, you know, like a lab. That's probably the most common shed dog. Probably, yeah. 
Maybe they're smart. You German Shepherd them. or something. You might be all right. Yeah. Usually retrievers. Any retrieving dog, like it's, has an you advantage. You can teach it easily. Yeah. yeah. Has an advantage because they sure. use their nose to figure that out. You betcha. But terriers, obviously, they work pretty pretty decent. Um, yeah. We'll put. We'll, I'll get you a gram picture of. Yeah. Little air dog packing an Elkhorn in her mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think. I mean, if you're into shed hunting. If you're going every year, I think it's it'd a good be job. worth having a dog to yeah. keep your dog exercised dog. Yeah. for its real purpose in life, bird hunting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you have it. There you have it. Bye. Get out there. Take your corgi up to those south-facing slopes, Yeah. preferably where no one's around, yeah. so you know the area's not getting beat to death, because I've had that experience, too. You go into a spot, and there's already been a ton of people in there, and then you don't find anything. Pick up the shed. Post it on the gram, put it back down for the next guy. Tag the hunting standard. Tag the hunting standard. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll like, subscribe, do the deal. We we need we're we're growing a little bit, but we need to really get up there. So if you what like, help, what helps with the growth? The reviews. Reviews are awesome. Subscribe. Yeah, we've been getting liking comments on and whatever, but on Facebook, that's great. Um, All of that's helpful. Yeah, if you have time, sit down and watch it on the TV. Uh, we have this on YouTube, and if not, and you're in the car or something like that, download that thing and uh, listen to it on the way to work. Spotify, Apple Spotify, Music, all of them. Amazon, yep. iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio, <laughs> yeah. We're in there. We're there, waiting for you. Yeah. Let us know some, give us what you want to hear on here. Yeah. You know? I mean, because we have a like list we of can things have an we outreach. want to talk about. But. We can talk to different people. We want to we want to relate to you and hit see what hits right. Yeah. So I mean, we could sit up here and talk about our grizzly bear encounters and our and our black bear encounters and you know going to Alaska and all this fun stuff, you know. But we got a request for the spring turkey hunt, so we got to get that. Yep. Off. That's spring, coming coming quick too. So spring turkey hunt. Maybe next week we'll chat about some spring turkey action. Yeah. And we got some experts maybe about the turkey hunting. Yeah. <laughs> you so betcha. Our eastern boys. <laughs> You but. betcha. All right, everybody. Have a great sunny afternoon. Hopefully it's sunny where you are. It will be. Yeah. Get out there and enjoy it. Yeah. Email your commissioner. Bye.